Hi guys. So this is a video to help you guys with lesson 7.2. Uh, you should have a copy of the notes in front of you. You're going to fill these out some examples and like the definitions, uh, steps for solving equations as we go here. Uh, and then when you're done with the notes, you can show your completed notes to the substitute teacher and they will give you the worksheet for homework. So we talked yesterday about writing equations. So we just finished not too long ago, chapter three with algebraic expressions, and now we have equations where there's an equal sign and there's basically expressions on both sides of the equal sign. So you're going to now learn how to solve equations now that you know how to write them. One of the keys to solving equations is using something called inverse operations. So the inverse operation is just essentially the opposite operation. So what does that mean? Well, I'll bet you guys can figure it out. If I ask you what's the opposite of adding, you hopefully would say subtracting. So adding and subtracting are inverse or opposite operations. Meaning like if I add 5 and then I take away 5, I'm right back where I started. So if I do 8 plus 5, that's 13. And then if I take away 5, I'm right back to 8. So they undo each other. They're inverse operations. They're opposites. And then the other blank here, I'll bet you guys could guess, if adding and subtracting are inverse or opposite operations, so are multiplying and dividing. Do they also undo each other, basically? And that's what it says in this next little blank here, is that inverse operations undo the operation in an equation so that you can solve for the variable. So we're going to use inverse operations to help us isolate the variable and solve and figure out what is x or what is y, whatever the variable may be. So solving, remember when we had algebraic expressions, it didn't say solve. And a lot of times you guys would ask me, do you want me to solve here? And I would kind of pause and I'd be like, uh, kind of. Because you're not really solving until you're figuring out what does the variable stand for. You guys are evaluating, but in your heads, that makes sense for you to call it solving. But now you're really going to solve. Solving means to find the value, the solution, for a variable in an equation. Okay, and those are the words you want to fill in. Solve solution, right? You're finding the solution for the variable in an equation. In other words, you're figuring out x equals 2 or y equals 7. That's solving. Simplifying an expression is just evaluating a certain thing. And then I put this little example down here at the bottom of a fairly complicated equation, at least for sixth grade, to kind of show you guys why you're going to need to show the work that I am going to require you to show. Um, and it's because eventually you're going to get to equations like this where you have to show your work to get the right answer. If you don't, there's no way you're going to be able to keep track of all these steps in your head. And this is still even a pretty easy equation in comparison to what you guys will be doing like by the end of eighth grade. So you have to get that good habit in now of showing your work, even if you think to yourself, but this is easy. I know some of you guys like to use that excuse of, but it's easy so I don't have to show my work, right? You still need to show your work, and this is why. Because eventually, you're going to be getting to something like this, and if you don't know how to show your work for the easy equations, you're going to be lost on those equations. So, buy into it now, because I'm only going to give you partial credit if you don't show your work anyway, right? So you might as well just do that. All right, so steps to solving an equation. How do we do it? Step one, you need to isolate the variable. And, like, what does isolate mean? Well, isolate means... Get it alone, get it by itself, okay? You might want to write in one of those synonyms there. If you don't know what isolate means. So in other words, you're going to have just x on one side of the equal sign, because then that will tell you that x equals what quantity, okay? Well, how do we do that? How do I get the variable by itself? Because currently there's a lot of stuff with it. Well, what you do is you use your opposite or your inverse operations to isolate that variable because remember they undo things. So if I currently have like x plus 5, the way to get that x by itself is to subtract 5. It's to do the opposite operation. Now when you do that opposite operation, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So do the same thing to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. Equation is kind of like that picture of a scale that I have down there. In one of these scales, if 
I took something away from the left side here, that side now became lighter. It's going to go up, and this side's going to go down if they were currently balanced. So I would have to take the same amount of weight away from this side to make them balance out again. I have to do the same things to both sides of the balance. Same thing with an equation. So if I'm going to, like I had said, if you had x plus 5, in order to get rid of that plus, you have to subtract. You have to do that to both sides of the equation. The sides, how can I tell where the sides of the equation are? It's separated by the equal sign. Okay. So if I do minus 5 over on this side, i got to do minus 5 over on that side. And that really becomes important when you get to these guys. And then maybe you guys can hopefully understand why it's so important to show the work. Because if I'm subtracting something over here, I'm subtracting something over here, it affects both sides. That's a lot to keep track of in your head. Okay? Uh, and then step four, do the math. You know, There's a lot of different operations you could be doing. You could be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You're going to determine that by figuring out what's the opposite operation. But then you're just going to do that operation until you get down to the point where you have isolated the variable. So let's take a look at an example. We have c plus 27 equals 41. Now what I'm going to recommend you guys do is find that equal sign and draw a line down on your, I try to make this look like lined paper to show you what your work should look like. Uh, you have a worksheet today so you won't have to rewrite the problem, but if, if this was a textbook assignment you would be expected to rewrite the equation first and then share work to solve. But we're going to draw that line there so we can see where the sides of our equation are. So now I know, okay, whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I'm going to have to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. So the first thing you should do is locate the variable. Okay, there it is. I need to get this variable by itself. I need to isolate it. Well, right now, it has plus 27 happening to it. So I need to ask myself, what's the opposite operation of adding? The opposite operation, the inverse operation, is to subtract. So the way to get rid of this plus 27 is to do the opposite operation, is to subtract 27. But if I subtract 27 on this side, I need to subtract 27 on this side. If you guys will notice, our work is going down, not sideways, okay? Again, when the equations get a lot more complicated, you are not going to be able to work sideways on equations. So go ahead and get used to working down, not sideways. That's how we're going to show our work. So this is a step of work right here, showing what we're doing to both sides, taking some weight away from each side of the balance, right? So now I'm going to look at my left side here and figure out what I have. Well, I have C, nothing happened to the C, so that's still going to be in my line of work down here. But I had plus 27 and I took away 27. Well, that would cancel each other out, right? 27 minus 27 would be 0. So I no longer have that over here. I still have my equal sign, and then over here I'm going to do the math. That's step four. So I'm going to do 41 minus 27. Well, can't do 1 minus 7, so I'm going to borrow. 11 minus 7 is 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. So now I have isolated the variable. It's just C. So this is my solution. C equals 14. Okay. Checking your answer. Not required. Not something I'm going to make you show on your homework or on a quiz or a test. But definitely a good idea to do, especially because you basically can check to make sure that your answer is correct. So definitely in a quiz or a test, before you turn it in, you should check your answers. How do you do that? Well, it's kind of like evaluating back in Chapter 3. It's telling us C should be 14. So take your original equation, C plus 27 equals 41, and put that value that you just got for the variable in and see if it works. So does 14 plus 27, does it equal 41? Double check it. Well, yeah, it does. 14 plus 27, 4 plus 7 is 11, right? Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 41. So, yep, it checks out. Our solution works. So that's how you can check your solution. You just put it back into the variable and make sure that both sides are equal. All right, let's look at another example. X plus 33 equals 92. So draw a line for your equal sign. Find the variable. Figure out what's happening to the variable. We're adding 33. So I'd ask myself, what's the opposite of adding? It's subtracting. So I want to subtract 33 from both sides. Over on this side, that would cancel out. So I just bring down my x, bring down my equal sign. Over here, I need to subtract. So I can't do 2 minus 3. So I need to borrow. 12 minus 3 is 9. 8 minus 3 is 5. So I get x equals 59. 
if I check that over here, I basically would be doing 59 plus 33 in my equation. And that works out. So my check works. I got the right solution. Example 3, h minus 21 equals 34. Draw my line, find my variable, what's happening to my variable, I'm subtracting 21. So to isolate it, I need to do the opposite. I need to add 21 on both sides. So it's the first time we're adding to solve an equation, okay? If it's subtracting to begin with, we add. If it's adding to begin with, we subtract. Now, some kids have a hard time understanding that this cancels out because they don't really look at the signs here. They just see 21 and 21. But remember, this is like minus 21. It's like this person was already down 21. And now they're adding 21. So they've gotten back up to zero, right? They were below zero, and now they're back up to zero. So they still canceled out. So my H comes on down. And then over here, I'm going to do my adding. And I get 55. If I check it, 55 minus 21, 34. Yes, it is. So that answer checks out. All right, why don't you guys pause the video for a second here and try these on your own? Okay, let's go over your answers and see how well you guys did here. So I'm not going to talk as much through the explanation here because hopefully you're getting the hang of it. So I'm just really going to show my work. You hopefully are still showing the same lovely work. So here you should get 172 as your solution for y. Over here, the variable was over on the right instead of the left. Maybe that threw you off a little bit. I know drawing the line should hopefully help. And then remember I said your next step should be find the variable. So that means in this equation, you were doing like your work, you were starting to look over here first instead of over on the left first. So E, we were taking away 68. So the opposite would be to add 68 to both sides. Always, always, it's whatever's with the variables, what you're adding or subtracting to both sides. So if you guys tried to add or subtract 79 to both sides, that wasn't going to get you the right answer. So then these would cancel out. And I have 9 plus 8 is 17. 7 plus 1 is 8 plus 6 is 14. So 147 equal E. That's the same thing as saying E equals 147. It's another one of those properties you guys just need to learn. It's called the symmetric property. But basically, when you guys have equations, like on your homework tomorrow when we check, if you had 147 equals E and I had written on my answer E equals 147, that means the same thing. Okay? If all you have are just two things, one thing on either side of equal sign, it doesn't really matter which side of equal sign you have it on. So like similarly up here, I could have said 172 equals Y, and that would still be a perfectly okay way to write the answer. Okay? Uh, let's look at some examples with fractions and decimals. Really no different in terms of how you solve the equation. You just need to remember your fraction and decimal adding and subtracting rules, which, if you remember, the key here, you need to line up the decimals. Make sure you are doing that. So, draw my line, find my variable, what's happening, I'm adding, so I want to do the opposite, which is to subtract. Kind of hard here to line it up. I know it's small on your paper as well, so if you need to like write it off to the side here, just so you can make sure you're clearly lining it up, I'm going to do that just so I can write it nice and big for you guys. But that's basically what I'm doing: is subtracting 12.1 and 5.9. But I want to make sure those decimals are lined up. So over here, that will cancel out, and I'll just have x. Can't do 1 minus 9. 11 minus 9 is 2. Remember, you bring down the decimal in your answer. Can't do 1 minus 5, so I'm going to borrow again. So we get 6 and 2 tenths for x there. And if you were to check it, 6 and 2 tenths plus 5.9 gives us 12.1. So that checks out. Over here, fractions. The key here when you're adding and subtracting fractions is you have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and at least first figure out what I need to do. Draw my line, find my variable. I'm subtracting 2 thirds, so I need to add 2 thirds to both sides. And I'm going to write it more like this because it's kind of hard for me to think about that way. So over here, I would probably just rewrite this off to the side. So I would go, okay, well, that's 4 fifths plus 2 thirds is the work I need to do here. I've got 5 and 3 as denominators. Remember, you need to come up with basically the least common multiple. So in this case, that'd be 15. That's a number they can share as a denominator. 
So if I did 5 times 3 to get 15, I need to do 4 times 3. That's 12. 3 times 5 is 15, so 2 times 5 is 10. Remember, you add the numerators, denominator stays the same. So 12 plus 10 is 22. That stays 15. You can either leave that improper, because that would be in simplest form, or make it a mixed number. 15 goes into 22 one time, and then you've got 7 left over. So you either could say y equals 22 15 or 1 and 7 15 So why don't you guys go ahead and try these two on your own. Go ahead and pause the video again for a minute. All right, let's check your work here. This example looked a little funky because the variable was like on the inside instead of on the outside. You still just need to look to the side with the variable and look at what's happening to it. You're adding 4.5, so the opposite operation would be to subtract 4.5. Again, make sure you line up your decimals here. You want a placeholder 0 to be able to do this correctly. So 3 minus 0 is 3. Can't do 0 minus 5. 10 minus 5 is 5. Bring down that decimal. Can't do 0 minus 4. But 10 minus 4 is 6. So 6 and 53 hundredths is our answer there. Over here, the variable's on the right instead of on the left, so we want to be looking over here. We're subtracting 1 in 725,000, so we want to add that amount to both sides, and again, we want to line up the decimal. Uh, I might want to rewrite it here, so well, I guess I can put a squeeze in the zero there. So 1.725, backing that up, so 0 plus 5, 9 plus 2 is 11, carry the 1, that's going to be 9. Bring down your decimal, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then bring down your 2. So 23 and 915 thousandths equals C. All right, last little thing we need to cover for today would be kind of putting together yesterday's lesson and today's lesson. So writing the equation and then solving it yourself. Uh, so number one, we have 18 less than a number X is 37. Remember the key we said is find that word that's indicating the equal sign. That kind of helps split it up for you. Uh, so in this case, is means equals. So I know my equal sign is right there. And I know the only thing on the right side of my equal sign then is that 37. So then I just need to figure out how to write this. 18 less than a number x. Remember, less than is one of those like tricky phrasings. It means subtraction. However, it's reverse of the order we see it in the sentence. So it's not going to be 18 minus x. It's going to be x minus so there's our equation, x minus 18 equals 37. Draw my line, there's my variable. I want to do the opposite, so I'm going to add 18 to both sides. That's going to give us x equals 55. Number 2 says 53 is the sum of a number y and 16. So look for your equals word. Again, it's is. So this is going to be one where the variable is on the right side of the equation instead of the left. The sum of a number y and 16, this is just like writing expressions from chapter 3. Sum means addition. They're telling us what variable to use y by saying a number y and 16. So we want to add y and 16. Then we can solve. So here's my variable. I want to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. That's going to give me y equals 37. All right, those are your notes. So once those are all complete and filled in and you feel like you understand it, go ahead and see the substitute teacher for your worksheet for homework.